Thank you. Firstly, thank you very much uh, for giving me opportunity to interview you for my YouTube channel and podcast. No problem. No problem. No problem at all. So I've gone through your profile and I came to know that uh, you are uh, uh, Microsoft Azure uh, Solutions Architect, also the co-founder of uh, Streaming Clouds. That's correct. Yes. So I thought to tell about uh, uh, your work yeah. and you to my audience. Can you please introduce yourself? Of course I can. Yeah. So my name is Kevin Evans. I'm a cloud solutions architect at Microsoft. I've recently moved from the UK to Canada with Microsoft as well, right? So it's been a bit of a crazy year for me, that's fair to say. But also this year, um, I launched, well, co-launched with Mr. Robin Smorenberg, Streaming Clouds, right? Where we, a bit like yourself, we launched a YouTube channel around um, cloud technologies. It seems to be Azure and specifics, right? It seems to be dominating most of our agenda, but what we wanted to do was really open up career advice and path for folks out there, right? In the community who want to get into tech, right? To make that approachable community as well. So we've also launched a, um, a community this year as well on discord, right? So people can come in and ask questions and get involved. Right. So yeah, that that's me. I've been in it or tech, Pretty much all my life. So starting from a young age and working my way up through that. And, you know, like most people started off on the service desk. So for you, you young people out there, right? What's a service desk, right? Because they don't really exist anymore, right? They do exist in some companies, right? But it was like, but it's where you answer the phone, right? And solve people's IT issues. And it was always started with password resets or my printer's broke or you know, there's something wrong with my computer, right? So you go and help them fix their computer, right? So, and, and I'm migra- yeah, I've, I've basically progressed from there all the way up to, to becoming a solutions architect at Microsoft. So why is streaming clouds? Why, what, the name or? Why, why you want to uh, uh, start? Why do I want to start? I, I think it was um, for me and Robin, we we wanted to create a platform that was inclusive and approachable. And when we when we started out in tech, and this is probably still the case today in some areas, um, finding the uh, finding the right mentors or finding people to look up to or asking for advice wasn't really there. You know, the standard response was go and read the book, right? Kind of thing. And then be like, what book? I don't know. Go and read the book, right? That that was like the response, right? Whereas we wanted to go, hey, we don't care where you are in your career, right? Even if you're just starting at home or you're, you know, you're in your bedroom or you, you know, you've got a, a, you know, an established career, right? come come and have a come and come and get involved come and collaborate right with us you know with streaming clouds and it's sort of evolved since then right we've brought on the the guests keep turning up you know which is great um we keep exploring different areas um we we try and think of how what kind of people can we bring on to this to the show right that can inspire or talk about a piece of technology right so that, that that's probably the main the main objective of streaming clouds so what you do uh you uh you create content create content on there yeah we've done a couple of technical demonstrations on there i think me and robin would like to do more but our schedules are quite busy right so we have our day jobs to do as well um but we also want to try and give this stuff out for free as much as possible right you know try and trying to lower the barriers for access to information. Um, So we do technical demonstrations. We also do interviews, Um, but it's a whole mixture of things. But we, like I said, we try and bring on guests, right. That really know their, know their skill set and their stuff. Right. And, and have the right mindset as well. So when they come on, they don't mind talking about it, showing it. Right. And really being an advocate for that particular, particular episode. Right. 
So, and most of them end up becoming community members as well. So most people that come on our show as guests end up joining the community as well. So it go, becomes full circle. So the name itself says that uh, it is about cloud. So you are helping, uh, uh, you want to help people who wants to come into cloud and start their career, uh, no matter uh, from which uh, background they are. Correct. That's exactly it, yeah. Right. I'd like to take credit for the name, but Robin came up with the name, right? Just want to put that out there. He's he's very good at that kind of thing. So <laughs> he he does all of our uh, uh, branding and everything, right? He's he's on point with that. He's pretty good. But yeah, exactly that. Stream streaming clouds. Cloud is in the name, right? So how many people got uh, 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 got benefit from this? Anybody. You know, as long as they can get access to YouTube, a bit like your channel, right? Folks turn up, they watch an episode, they get access to the information. We try and, we, you know, we, we try and advocate it across social media uh, where you can get hold of us, right? How you can join, like I said, like the community platform before. Um, but yeah, going to the YouTube channel, watching some episodes, give us feedback, right? Because me and Robin are big on feedback, you know, good or bad. Right. Luckily, we've had lots of good feedback, but even if something's not right or on point, we welcome that as well. Right. So, you know, if there's something, you know, we, we put a poll out a few months ago and we asked what the audience wanted. Right. And at the time, it was landing zones. Right. Azure landing zones, which is a big subject in itself. So we went off and got the, the manager in Microsoft. Right. Who's who's in charge of the cloud adoption framework. And he came on the show and he did good Jeff Mitchell absolutely great guy by the way uh, came on the show and talked about cloud adoption framework so if people have got ideas as well come to me right so I will try and find the best people that we've got in our industry to try and come on the show and talk about it right so you get it from the horse's mouth so how many uh, till now uh, got uh, uh, knowledge from this so it's growing we only started in the beginning of the year um we're I don't. Robin. Robin takes care of all the metrics, <laughs> but it, it's not doing too bad. I mean, it's coming up to five thousand, right? We're getting the views on YouTube. Um, we're getting up to nearly two hundred people in the community, right? So it's growing day by day, kind of thing. So I couldn't. You know, we have folks that watch a video that we did eight months ago, right, and go and leave comments and say, hey, that was that was great. But for us, it's not really about the numbers. It's just more about um, as long as we could have, you know, teached or taught one person and they leave the inf- leave away with the right information, that, that's a win for us, right? So uh, You already are doing great, great work uh, by being a, a cloud solutions architect at Microsoft. It is already yep. uh, consuming a lot of your time. And why oh, yes. streaming, streaming clouds again? Um, so half of it was when I when I came to Microsoft, um, it became apparent that I had to do a lot more public speaking, a lot more presentations, right? A lot more teaching. And I thought, how can I get better at this, right? And as you as you're probably well aware, right? going on the internet and presenting yourself is difficult right especially you know am i doing it right am i getting the message across and you know you watch some of our streams they're really real right and it's normally me that messes up right you can watch rob and go oh no right but that, that, that was it. it was to improve confidence and get better at like basically talking to people around the world right from different countries different backgrounds because I like being a teacher, right? It was something that I never thought I would want to get into, but it's probably been more rewarding than most of the roles that I've ever had. I came from a technical background, right? Engineering or platform engineering. So, you know, doing this was a great way of, well, let's push push my way out there, right? And starting at Microsoft as well, they give you a lot of freedom to do that as well, right, as an organization. Right, go out and be limitless, basically. Right, so I didn't have that kind of freedom previously in other organisations, um, but Microsoft sees the value in it, and I have to, you know, I have to disclose that 
like everybody from my line manager to to the immediate um leadership team around me um and my colleagues they all back they're always watch trying to watch our videos or our streams right so they get they get really involved as well so it's it's a good community effort as well so how many years uh, you spent time on technology and uh, what are the roles that uh, you did uh, uh, in your life and uh, another question uh, today uh, you are uh, into uh, cloud solution architecting so how all those job, jobs are uh, helping you to uh, do this role better also uh, what you have understood uh, uh in this uh, complete technology experience that uh, uh, that is helping you today to tell to somebody who wants to come into cloud so there's some, there's some good questions there so i started off in it or in tech from a very young age right um we had a computer at home right we're fortunate to, fortunate enough to have one right um and it sort of started from there building computers to play video games right in the 90s that's where it all started right that that's where you know and I, i was lucky enough to have access to the internet as well so when people talk about yo the internet being launched in the early 90s right i mean it was like 1996 and i had access to the internet right and it was very basic back then i can still remember it some sort of elements to it but i i was like eight or nine years old right and when i talk to folks like you and i talk about this i realize i'm getting older right so um but you know i i you know I, i sort of in my teenage years i managed to get some voluntary work at some some local companies right and it was like windows 2000 and active directory and that helped me a lot right get my head around like enterprise platforms not just building computers to play you know quake or unreal tournament it was at the time right if you don't know what they are go and look them up on wikipedia they were they were big right they were big and um it sort of stemmed from there and when i left school i went to college and basically got some college diplomas in i don't know if you've heard of well still going very strong to this day is CompTIA and they have an A plus examination right and that was like basics of PCs right computers so build you know building computers installing operating systems that kind of thing right for businesses so i went to college and did that and then i left college and found out it was very difficult to get a job in tech right which a lot a lot of you a lot of the younger generation now right or the new generation are finding right and exactly that's what i mean robbing you know we talk about streaming clouds right it all comes full circle so it took me a while to get a job in tech and that's all i'd ever done right it was the only thing i knew the only thing i was particularly good at as well right um i managed to land a few tech roles and like i said i started on the help desk right doing the basics you know and i worked worked from like the ground up from there so you know we talk about first line second line and third line historically i worked my way up right and depending on the number depends on the seniority right or the access to the technology you're able to fix what you'll find in most organizations is once they realize you you, you can fix something right they'll let you do what you want right as long as you're <laughs> as long as you're helping the organization in the right way right so you know i ended up managing servers then becoming like a data center engineer then i did i obviously did networking in the process of that but it was mainly windows infrastructure systems right and then once i became like a i don't know like a with managing data centers right i was um then i thought i'd try my hat at cybersecurity so i did that for a while and became like a security engineer then became like a security officer then i learned how all that worked right from a governance point of view so i decided i actually liked building stuff more than securing things right because it's a tough gig being a cybersecurity professional you're always trying to advocate you know what do i need to do to secure this environment right you've got to be really good at like 
convincing people that it's the right thing to do because essentially at the end of the day it's always an insurance policy that you're trying to sell right when you work in cyber so i take my hat off to all the CISOs out there all the security engineers everybody right that's that's try to you know fight the good fight so i got back into um infrastructure and i went and became a contractor right so i started working for myself and that's where the cloud took off right and it all started with Office 365 and migrating Mailbox to, to the cloud, right? And setting up, setting up Azure Active Directory. And it's sort of built from there. So instead of, instead of, you know, I've worn a lot of hats in the past, but what you realize is when you move to cloud, you're not just doing one job anymore. You've got to do a mixture of all the jobs. You've got to be the networking person. You've got to be the identity person. You've got to be, you know, the security person, right? You've got to be the programmer, right? The developer, right? You've got to think about all this good stuff, right? You've got to be the architect, right? Even if you're an engineer, right? And you're feeding into designs, right? So, you know, you're validating that what's being proposed is actually going to be working, right? And I want engineers across the landscape, right? They, Hopefully they're crying out with tears of joy at this point, but it's true, right? You know, creating that diagram and saying that it's going to work is different from actually working in reality, right? So technical engineers or platform engineering, right, is very key, right? And that's where the cloud comes in. And I think all those real life experiences and all those different hats have helped feed into me eventually becoming a cloud solutions architect, right? So now I do a hybrid of both. I do some engineering, and I do some architecture work as well. So I've got the best of both worlds, right? So it's great for me because I like to be technical. So what is your responsibility as a cloud solution architect? So the response, well, so like roles and responsibilities as a cloud solution architect, I think, you know, above all else, it's advising or developing the best solution that fits the scenario that we're in for our customers, right? So being that the most simplest design and the most low cost design as well, right? Those are the big, the big objectives. So it's, you know, it's really critical because when, when you get a requirement come in from a customer, you want to be able to present a solution, right? In this case, for Azure, for, Azure, for me, um, that's going to do the job, right? So what they've actually asked for, this is the business problem that I have and how I resolve that to, you know, the technical aspects of it as well. How's that going to work in practice? Right. So it's pretty critical. Right. And it's you you need those years of experience to help you get there. Right. To to understand and propose that solution. So those are the main main responsibilities, I would say. It's 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 a technical advisor role. It's probably the best way of, of putting it. So now you have uh, uh, shifted your mind uh, uh, from uh, uh, doing that to uh, telling to telling to others and giving advices to them to come into cloud. So it is a teacher kind of a role. So how you become, how you uh, migrated yourself from that to this? I'm going to be honest, it wasn't easy. I wanted to still be building stuff. Right. I want it to still be in the in the engine room and, you know, getting getting my hands dirty all the time. Right. I've been fighting this off for a while. It's probably the best way of describing this. Um, but it's been for the best. It really has. It's it, I know exactly like what you said. It's it's taken a while to transition from from that mindset to, to this mindset. But it's uh, it's the growth mindset. Right. You, you see that on the Internet. You read about it. Right. It's. My advice is go and take a chance at it because you might actually end up enjoying it. And if not, you're just going to learn something from it, aren't you, regardless? You know, it's experience at the end of the day. So doing stuff like streaming clouds and presenting online, right, and talking to the community more and, you know, meeting folks from across the globe and, and, and understanding what they're, you know, when they ask me questions, it just makes me, a, it makes me a better teacher, right? It makes me articulate things or describe things in a better way or you know approach approach scenarios in a different way so it's a win-win all round at the end of the day 
so what kind of questions they come with to you normally it's like how do i get into tech right how do i um what do i need to do to get into cloud right and it's what kind of advice can you give out right where do i start because it's it's very big isn't it right if we if we talk about cloud it's huge you know not just from the, the the free main cloud providers right you know but when folks you know pick a cloud and hopefully it's the microsoft cloud right but you know how do i start my journey you know what do i need to know it can become over very overwhelming and and you know um and i always go right first thing is i learn by doing some folks learn by reading books and passing exams right you need a mixture of both right certifications are great but having experience right is even better and i know it's difficult right because i remember my first job you know i i could do all this stuff but you've never had a job before right in tech so how do you get there right go and get a free account in azure right we were always posting links on this constantly right go and do the 100 days of devops kind of thing right the install the linux operating system i mean I used to do that as a teenager all the time. I learned loads by deploying Linux locally, right? And that's a main skill for folks to have. You want to create as much community visibility as possible, right? That when you go for an interview, that you've got evidence. You know, when people build resumes or CVs, right? They talk about their experience. If you haven't got that experience, show them what you're doing online. Could be a technical video, could be a demonstration, could be a blog, right? It could be your local meetup, right? Turn up, because that is the best way. Because once there are people out there that'll see that spark, right? And we'll go, do you know what? I'll I'll take them on board, right? That's what we tend to get a lot of is, you know, folks that are starting out in their career, right? And wanting to know where to start, right? And it's always, you know, go and get experience, get hands on. How do I do that though, right? You know, kind of thing. So just go and build a VM in the cloud, right? A virtual machine, break it, build it again, make it better, right? Uh, the amount of times I've reinstalled or built servers is I, I couldn't even count, right? So, or, or networking, right? It's a complex subject. Um, and then there's different there's different certification paths for that as well, right? And Microsoft Learn is a great resource for that, right? And it's free. So you can go off and learn particular aspects and technologies in Azure as well. But then we get folks that are like mid-career and they're like, I don't know which route to take. We get a lot of questions on that, right? So that's where the mentorship comes in. So, yeah, that, that I would say they were the main the main questions that we get. So uh, uh, you are into one of the top uh, cloud providers uh, uh, in the in the world. So, is it possible uh, for a non-technical pe- or non-technical people to come into uh, cloud? Is it yeah, easy? and I've seen, I'll, I've seen it, right? So, having people come from under other industries, granted, there's going to be a transition phase, right? But I wouldn't say it was impossible. The digital skills initiative, right? As we know, right? The the, the economies around the globe are changing. The approach, right? People need to get into tech, right? Depending on what it could be, it could be data science, it could be, you know, platform engineering, it could be a developer role, it could be a security role, right? The way I always describe it is, you know, I is what you've learned previously isn't wasted, right? You've got real life experience. Bring those bring those experiences with you, right? It's not impossible. Will it take time? Yes, right? But it can be done. I mean, I I was speaking to someone just before I left the UK and they just joined Microsoft and their last job was a vet. They were a vet, right? So they were helping animals, right? Microsoft could see the compassion side of things, right? So it's about having the right attitude there, right? So they brought that person on board and they were like, I've never worked in tech before, right? And we have folks from all sorts of industries come in, right? So, and the human interaction element 
it, it, you know is, is is better right for our customers and our community as well so i was blown away right when they told me that's what their last job was but i was like yeah that's the world we live in right they wanted a shot at being in tech right they wanted to see what it was going to be like so if you are a, a hiring manager and if you want to hire a person into cloud uh what kind of skills that you see and uh, what qualities they need to have the answers that you are going to give for these questions will definitely help a lot of uh, uh, uh confused people who wants to come into cloud so for me i think what would help is if i was on the interview panel right the things i look for are people that are humble straight away don't come in and tell me you can do everything if you can't do it i can't do everything right i i i don't think there's a such thing as an expert right so come in humble yeah just come in with a pro learning attitude right that's the best way right does it matter if you've got a degree or not no right you've been to university that's great right there's a lot of hard work and you've achieved something but have you gone off and worked several jobs well that's an achievement in itself right you've gained lots of experience try and focus on a particular area clouds very big and very large right so do the stuff that you've got passion about as well so if you're into networking go and become a cloud network engineer right and if, you know a platform engineer if you're into security go and become a security engineer and the same is like if you're into figuring out how you can use data right to do all the magical things that they can do with data now right go and go and go into data science right so pick something um go and show initiative by taking a certification right um be that you know the basic certifications or something more mature or you know a little bit more developed but then you know if i could see that you've got like i was saying before i could see you in the community right and i can see you helping others that's going to go a long way a long long way and uh, what kind of projects that you would do as a cloud solutions architect it's a very good question everything and every anything is probably the best response right i i'm i'm aligned to what we call azure core right which is azure infrastructure now that bleeds into everything that can that's obviously the core infrastructure that you need to set up your your data center in the cloud but it also touches security right so i could be dealing with security projects with customers i could be dealing with connectivity projects with customers or i could be talking about automation so infrastructure as a code right and i could be talking about that as well with our customers a very broad scope right and that's what i was talking about so if you've got to focus on something right if you like like me right i i like to be able to have a go at everything right so infrastructure is probably a good bet for you right very broad touches everything right but doesn't get particularly deep right but you can still focus in those areas so you could be broad at infrastructure but be deep at networking or if you want to become more you know data platform focused then go and look into data and ai right or if you want to become more developer focused look at applications and innovation right so those particular areas that's what I was talking about right it's figuring out where you want to go and it's really difficult sometimes right so so from a project point of view it could be it could be anything i'll be quite honest <laughs> and uh, what is what is your driving force uh, what is uh, pushing you forward uh, uh, daily wake up in the morning and uh, 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 what is inter- what is creating interest in you to do something in cloud every day so for me i've always had a passion for technology so it's something that i can i can lean on but you know it's it's always learning something new i think it is for me right everything else will fall into line if you can go in and say i've learned something new then you you you're good to go in my book but yeah that's what makes me get up in the morning 
and uh, talking with people and uh, talking with computer which one uh, you prefer and why it used to be talking to the computer right or dealing with the computers right in the tech but it's definitely talking to people these days i just like meeting people i mean it's great you know you find out the story you find out what's going on you know you learn something new so i like that more than anything these days and uh, your experiences that you cannot forget as a technologist i mean it's the times that i've messed up I just want to put that out there, right? It's like a I just want folks to be comfortable at failing, right? And it's difficult, especially in 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 tech, right? It's it's like a rite of passage, right? I've been lucky where situations have happened and the seniors around me have gone, "Welcome to the club." Right? Kind of thing because that's what happens all the time, right? you just got to obviously not try and do it again right and make it better so i've remembered some good projects that i've worked on but i'll be honest more and more and more at the time i think back it's been about the time i've gone oh no i've done this or i've you've accidentally deleted something or you've cut the wrong cable or you've brought production down right it's it's a rite of passage right hopefully it just doesn't cause too much damage <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah and uh, how to solve problems in cloud how to look at uh, problems in cloud so for troubleshooting i think is more of a mindset that you build up experience wise um and you learn that over the years regardless of the tech platform right but it's also about trying to isolate which part isn't working immediately be that connectivity be that storage be that the compute side of things be that a security element right you target these areas depending on the kind of hopefully you've got some sort of logging enable or some sort of error right so you can start working off that but what i find more and more these days it's more about the code that you deploy right and the errors that you run into there right so it become you become more of a developer mindset and you try and to troubleshoot the codes that uh, the code did the errors that you get in your code from deploying pipelines or deploying a particular infrastructure as a code language right so i think it's more about the configuration rather than the hardware these days right because you've moved to cloud and someone else is doing a better job at it right <laughs> of managing all that hardware for you right so it becomes more of a what what's what's with the configuration rather than oh Okay, we've got a problem in the in the data center kind of thing. So as an architect, I'm sure uh, you will be exchanging words with a lot of people, uh, trying to know their uh, requirement and needs and uh, uh, give them what they want. So uh, uh, listening to people and also uh, 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 creating architecture uh, which exactly matches with their requirement. So this 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 uh, complete. Uh, Uh, in in and out how will you explain so you know when you're when you start entering these scenarios check your audience is the best way right you're going to have folks that you're going to be speaking to that are business decision makers right so articulating or trying to figure out what the business problem is is a number one key then you work with the technical folks right and that's when you start becoming you know the technical solution for it which fixes the business problem right be that you know the business problem could be anything it could be i need to get more produce out the door right maybe it's a supermarket chain yeah how how do i make that better kind of thing right it's a pretty broad statement but that's what you need to it's not you know you need to understand it's not just the technical solution it's the business problems that you're trying to solve as well for the organization that you're working with so understanding you know which um which audience you're speaking to will really help you so uh, these people who wants to come into cloud uh, who have uh, no knowledge about how it works what to do uh, what will be there they have no knowledge and uh, uh, what kind of mindset that helps uh, them to uh, solve problems uh, uh, in cloud in future because you are telling that uh, 
uh, you, you, you have, you experience uh, and uh, you also solve different, all types of problems, business problems, being a solutions architect. So uh, what kind of mindset that they should come with, which will make them easier to understand uh, and get into it? I think it's the eternal student mindset. Yeah. Right. Well, being a cliche, that's number one. Just go in and prepare to learn. You're not going to get it right the first time around. Right. If you've got an empathetic attitude, you're going to be fine. Right. It's all about being relatable. You know, take the requirements, go away and find the answer. Right. At the end of the day, you don't need to know the answer on the spot. Right. You can't know everything. Right. But you can go away and find the answer. Right. Reach out to your community, your network whoever it may be, right? Your brother, your friend, your sister, whatever, right? And and just go away and discuss that offline in a more comfortable environment, right? So handling those tough questions and then just build up your experience, right? Every time you're in a situation, you're getting a little bit better, right? You're getting exposure. That would be my advice. And uh, coming to uh, uh, about yourself, uh, you have been in technology for from a long time. You saw the evolution of the technology now, you are into uh, the 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 uh, very big uh, market sharing uh, platform today. So, what do you say about this uh, evolution of technology that you saw? So it's getting faster. It's probably the best way to describe it. I would say um, it's kind of crazy. It's gone from stuff that I was doing in the '90s to the early 2000s, right? It's now becoming more abstracted away. Um, and I think the innovation rate is getting faster and faster. So that's the number one thing I always hear from customers, right, that have been on premise. When they get into the cloud, they may have had a, a technological life cycle of like 10 to 15 years in some circumstances. And now we're talking monthly yearly life cycles right of technology so the rate of innovation and change is faster and that's why i was talking about before don't expect to come in tomorrow and expect it to be the same right you've always got to keep on evolving so it's tough it is tough and it's tough for human beings right um but yeah i i would say you know trying to keep up is difficult but turning up is probably the key so if you turn up, right, you keep learning, you're going to be OK. And what made Microsoft to uh, go everywhere and uh, uh, solve problems uh, everywhere on the planet? So f- for Microsoft, you know, it's uh, the mission statement, right, from uh, Satya Nadella is to empower every organization and every person on the planet. Right. So. Microsoft's been creating software and hardware for well well before I was born anyway right so it's it's been a you know I think it's over 40 years I think it was the late 70s 70s I can't remember so by creating those platforms they need to create solutions right you know so I think it's just about you know trying to get trying to use technology for good and solve those problems right across the globe be that for business or for environmental or for you know helping economies right getting people into jobs that kind of thing right there's a lot of initiatives around that so i mean i think for microsoft i think it's more about you know this is more of a personal statement the microsoft statement it's more of um trying to help as many people as possible right different areas and uh, Microsoft have uh, uh, data centers even under the water. That's right. Yeah. Did you see that in Scotland? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very clever. So, you know, that comes back to the environmental impact. Data centers require a lot of power, water and cooling. So imagine if you could just put that underneath the sea, right? And then the sea's cooling it down. It's pretty clever, right? So they're trying to figure that out. Trying to figure that out on a larger scale. It's when I saw that, I was like blown away as well. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I think there's more to come. We just got to keep an eye out. Uh, can we also expect uh, Microsoft to put uh, data centers in International Space Station or other parts of the 
you I wouldn't put it past I wouldn't put it past them, right? You know, it'd be great to have an Azure region on the moon. You know? Yeah. I I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. But yeah, we'll see what happens, eh? So how this uh, evolution, how uh, Microsoft is thinking, how Microsoft is understanding the humans and uh, solving their problems. It is growing very fast. That's right. I think, you know, being a global company, they're able to see what's happening around the world. And, you know, they can see what's happened locally in certain countries. And they they want to help, you know, um, such as the thing is in, you know, with Ukraine at the moment, you know, Microsoft stepped in, helped them. You know, they were under a lot of cyber attacks. You know, Microsoft stopped, stepped in and helped them, you know, sort of deflect the Russian cyber attacks, right, that are happening on the country. So there's there's a lot going on there, right? And I think mean, that's great for them to step in and do that kind of thing or keep the communications going in Ukraine, right, from a from a technology point of view. You know, that's going to help people on the ground, right, help people's lives, that kind of thing. So human, humanitarian assistance, you know, it's, it's just equally as important, right? It's commercial interests as well. Can I say uh, this is this understanding uh, uh, for you is actually helping you in uh, streaming cloud because uh, you have started career long back and uh, you did uh, so much uh, development, software development. And also now you are talking with human beings and listening to the real problems, real technological business problems. So you you are a developer as well as a, uh, a person who understands the business side of the technology. Yeah, you gotta have, you gotta need to have, have your have a, you know your mindset in both, right? You've yeah. got to be the technological person, right. but you've also got to be the human being as well, right? So. so you 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 are great in both well i mean that's people's opinions right i don't know if i'm great or not right i wouldn't say i was great but yeah you've got to you've got to be you've got to have the skill sets in both right and that's why i was trying to get up before so is learning learning how to do that is, is, is pretty crucial to to your success in your career so at last, uh, what do you say to my audience who are listening to our conversation from anywhere on this planet? I would say don't stop what you're doing, right? By even watching this episode, right, you're going to be learning something new. Just keep on collaborating, I think, is the best way. I, I think the great thing about working in tech is um, you can make friends and colleagues all across the world, Yeah. I mean, that's probably been a major thing I've seen in the last 30 years. It, you know, the Internet doesn't have borders, does it, at the end of the day, right? So you can reach out and talk to folks all over the, you know, all over the world, right? So you can build on that. And uh, what is your, your observation about my work? Have you seen any videos of mine on YouTube and also my questioning in this conversation? I mean, I mean it's great what you're doing, right? So... I think you're trying to bring down the the barriers, which is which is a number one one number one key thing for me, right? So, reaching out to folks like myself, bringing them up in front of your community, I think it's great. So, just keep on making the videos, keep on keep on doing interviews like this. I think are really good as well because it gives people, you know, um, well actually I might try that, right, kind of thing. So I might go and look into that. So yeah, just just keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, I did master's in software engineering, also bachelor's in computer science and engineering. And right now I'm getting trained as a AWS um, DevOps engineer uh, role. Right. Yeah. So just now today, uh, CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment uh, topic, they said. So uh, learning, uh, being in that side, being uh, uh, getting into DevOps engineer and also talking with experts like you, who are already in the great companies, top companies in the world, and who, who are from different parts of the world, talking like this, uh, listening to you people, and what I'm going to learn from these conversations, and how I'm going to use this knowledge if I work in uh, uh, cloud in coming days. Yeah, I think you're in a great spot, by the way. Being a DevOps engineer, right? You're gonna learn a lot. I, I mean, when I when I spent some time as a DevOps engineer, I learned loads. 
absolutely loads, right? I'd never even touched VS Code in my life, right? And then all of a sudden, Terraform, right? It becomes your best friend, right? So you just keep doing what you're doing, and you, you're on the right path. Can I put this video on my YouTube channel with your permission? Of course, you can. And also, can I put this audio and video clip on my podcast website, internet, social media, everywhere with your permission? Yeah, you put it out wherever you want. It's fine. Uh, can you share your uh, social or web links to my audience? Can you spell it? Yes, of course I can. I will send them in the chat after this, so you'll be able to share them out. Yeah, with with your uh, uh, from. Uh, can you tell? Can you spell it to my post- podcast listeners? So, sorry, say it again. Can you spell it? For my podcast listeners. You want me to spell it out? So yeah. just bear with me. I've got the link here. You just bear with me a second. I'll just check on my phone. Sure. So you can find me. I should have known this. But I also go go as go by the name of the Netrunner, right? So if you go to net net hyphen runner dot io. You can find all my contact contact information on there and where to find me on social media as well. And you can also find me on streaming clouds, right? So if you go to youtube.com forward slash streaming clouds, you can find me there as well. I'll put all your links in the description of this video. People who find that video on YouTube can see it and uh, can see the work that you're doing and can learn from you as well. Awesome. Sounds great. Well, thank you very much. It's been great being on the show. Thank you, Kevin, for your valuable time and uh, giving answers for some of my questions. No problem. I'll speak to you later. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.